Kuro no Kiseki 2 is set to come out later this year, and while there is no official release date as of this video, given the series' past history, it's safe to assume it will arrive around the end of September. And along with it, there are a number of changes and additions we already know are coming to the game. Fishing is one that has already been confirmed, but we can reasonably assume there will be much more, such as new party members for example. That being said, there are a handful of changes and additions that I really hope happen going into Kuro no Kiseki 2, which is exactly what we're going to be talking about with today's video. But the end of September is still a ways off and I'm sure you're going to want something to do in the meantime. Well, why not check out Nino Kuni Cross Worlds from the sponsor of today's video, Netmarble. Nino Kuni Cross Worlds is a vast open world RPG that expands upon and reimagines the fantasy world of the original Nino Kuni games, featuring its trademark anime style graphics, an immersive story and open world, and of course original music by longtime Studio Ghibli composer Hisaishi Jo, a combination that will surely bring back that sensation of participating in an interactive animated film. In Nino Kuni Cross Worlds, you can choose from five unique characters to control, each with their own weapon, playstyle, and real world backstory. You have the Engineer, who is a long range specialist that can deploy mechanical inventions in battle with varying effects, the Destroyer, who is a melee tank that can protect his allies from enemies, the Swordsman, who is a balanced fighter boasting good attack and defense, the Witch, who uses magic to attack enemies from range by controlling her spear, and finally the Rogue, who focuses on quick movement and dealing critical hits with his bow. Additionally, you'll be able to collect a myriad of familiars with different elemental alignments and skills to help assist you in battle. Other features you can look forward to in Nino Kuni Cross Worlds include a farming system, a reputation system to get to know the world's inhabitants, kingdom building, PvP, and much more. If any of this sounds interesting to you, and especially if you're a fan of the original Nino Kuni games, be sure to click the link in the video description to pre-register for Nino Kuni Cross Worlds today so you're ready to jump in when it releases this summer. And of course, big thanks to Netmarble and Nino Kuni Cross Worlds for sponsoring today's video, and now let's get back into the content. So let's start things off with what is my most desired change I hope is made with Kuro no Kiseki 2, and that is a much better balance between dialogue and gameplay. Now the Kiseki series is no stranger to having lots of dialogue, but Kuro no Kiseki took this to a new level by having more dialogue than any other title in the series. And normally this wouldn't really be that big of an issue, this is a story driven series after all. However, Kuro no Kiseki lacked a means of breaking up dialogue sections which made the game feel overly wordy and bloated. The script also felt less polished than previous entries, but it really was the long stretches of nothing but dialogue that was the main issue. For example, if you read and listen to all the main story dialogue instead of skipping anything, it wasn't unreasonable to find yourself doing nothing but talking to people for about 10-15 to 15 hours at a time before getting any sort of exploration or combat. There is even a series of cutscenes that lasts 2 hours and 30 minutes. What Kuro no Kiseki needed, and what I hope has changed with Kuro no Kiseki 2, is the addition of content that serves to break up, or at least give the player the option, to break up long stretches of dialogue. In previous titles, this would be done by having the player travel to different locations on foot, or through the use of some explorable dungeon that gradually expands as the player progresses through the story. With Kuro no Kiseki 2, this could be accomplished by having Vaughn travel to some areas in which he can't just take his car the entire way. Maybe he can take his car halfway, but then the terrain necessitates travel by foot the rest of the way to reach his destination. They could also open up more of Edith City's underground catacombs for the player to explore each chapter, serving a similar function to the old schoolhouse from the Cold Steel arc or to the Geofront from the Crossbell arc. Doing either one of these, or preferably both, would go a long way towards helping to balance out the dialogue-heavy sections and the gameplay sections of the game. Another addition they could make to help break up long dialogue sections is the addition of side content. Which brings me to the next thing I hope they add in Kuro no Kiseki 2, Vantage Masters. Now we know for a fact that fishing is returning to the series after being absent from the first Kuro no Kiseki, but in addition to fishing, I personally hope they bring back the Vantage Masters minigame as well. I know some people didn't like that minigame, but I really enjoyed it and would love to see it expanded upon even further, especially after the challenge matches they added in Hajimari no Kiseki. Shifting gears a bit, I want to talk about party member acquisition, as the next big change I hope they make with Kuro no Kiseki 2 is having the main cast join your party at a much earlier point in the game. In Kuro no Kiseki, a new party member would join your party each chapter starting in the prologue with Anius, followed by Feri in chapter 1, Aron in chapter 2, and so on. On the one hand, this slower acquisition of the main cast did let the player get to know each character before a new one was introduced. On the other hand though, two of your party members kind of got shafted in the screen time department due to how late they actually join you. I think this slower approach would have worked better if Kuro no Kiseki had a smaller main cast similar to Trails from Zero, but with 8 main party members and a host of guests, it felt pretty bad to only get to use some of the characters for a comparatively small portion of the game. 
With Kuro no Kiseki 2, I'm hoping that at least by the halfway point you have access to the entire lineup of main party members. And I don't think that this is all that unreasonable if we assume that the previous cast will be returning with maybe a few extra additions. Which is a nice segue into the next change I hope they make with Kuro no Kiseki 2, and that is making the alignment system actually matter. Now I know what you may be thinking, how does the alignment system work as a segue from talking about party members? Well, let me explain. You see, in Kuro no Kiseki, the alignment system is a point system in which you get points towards either law, gray, or chaos alignment depending on what side quests you do and occasionally how you have Vaughn respond to different situations. And then based on your alignment parameters when you reach a certain point in the game, you may or may not be able to temporarily team up with different groups of guest characters. And while that sounds cool on paper, there are a number of issues with the system. The primary culprit being the lack of repercussions. You see, no matter what choices you make, what side quests you do or don't do, there are no repercussions whatsoever. You can only ever gain points with an alignment. Your party members always agree with your decisions, and you can still do every side quest in the game no matter what. The only time your alignment actually has any meaning in the first game is the part where you can temporarily team up with certain guest characters, but even then the system is almost meaningless. This is because to complete the game, you must do at least 70% of the side quests, making it very easy to meet the alignment requirements to have free choice over any group of guest characters you want without even trying. What I'm hoping for going into Kuro no Kiseki 2 is for there to be actual repercussions for your actions based on your alignment. Maybe make it so that choosing, say, a chaos option in a side quest will lower your law points and vice versa. And then maybe make it so that some side quests may not even be available to you depending on your alignment. If they do add more party members in addition to the original game's cast, maybe they could make it so that your alignment determines who actually joins. Really, anything that provides weight to your decisions would go a long way towards making the system actually matter. Because as it stands now, despite being a system that is marketed as a key feature of the Kuro no Kiseki series, the alignment system is effectively pointless. Moving on, another major change I hope they make with Kuro no Kiseki 2 is to make the game actually challenging. Now I know difficulty in games can be a touchy subject, and I'm not asking for them to remove easier difficulty options for those that want them. But what I do want is for the harder difficulties to be, you know, actually harder. And I know that the Kiseki series isn't exactly known for being difficult, even when playing on the Nightmare difficulty. But at least when playing on Nightmare in previous titles, the enemies could actually kill you if you were unprepared or weren't paying attention. The issue with Kuro no Kiseki though, is that the game is just so easy that even on Nightmare, you are never in any danger of dying, as the enemies simply aren't dangerous and don't deal enough damage. When doing a playthrough in which I posed heavy restrictions on myself while playing on Nightmare, the only enemy in the game that was actually capable of killing any of my party members was the literal final boss. In fact, if you play the game the way it encourages you to play, most enemies will never even get the option to attack you. If I had to equate Kuro no Kiseki's difficulty to the difficulty of previous entries in the series, I'd say that Nightmare Mode in Kuro is about as difficult as Easy Mode in past titles. Now, I'm not exactly sure what the best way to go about adding challenge to Kuro no Kiseki 2 would be, as there are a number of things that could be done, but just to name a few things off the top of my head, they could increase enemy damage, or they could provide enemies with more varied avenues of attack, or even just buffing the speed of enemies so that they can actually take actions in battle would go a long way, I think. However, one real easy way to go about it would be by bringing back two features that were first implemented in Hajimari no Kiseki, the Abyss difficulty and enemy level scaling. The Abyss difficulty was a new difficulty setting they added in Hajimari no Kiseki that was above the Nightmare difficulty and it was a lot of fun as it completely changed up how I had to play the game and necessitated new strategies. And enemy level scaling was an option you could toggle in the options menu that increased the level of all enemies by either 50 or 100. The inclusion of both of these options into Kuro no Kiseki 2 would be an easy way of adding more challenge to the game for those that want it, especially if they're content with the difficulty curve of the first game. But the main reason that I want these two things to make a return is because of New Game Plus. This is because by putting the game on the Abyss difficulty and toggling the setting to increase all enemy levels by 100, you could go into a New Game Plus run with all of your fun in-game toys such as in-game quartz, max level master quartz, and in-game accessories, and still get a challenging experience instead of just steamrolling everything. In Hajimari no Kiseki, Abyss plus 100 managed to give purpose to all of those powerful tools you could acquire by providing a place to actually use them, and I would love to see it brought back in Kuro no Kiseki too. And there you have it, 6 changes and additions I would love to see with the upcoming release of Kuro no Kiseki 2. Of all of these ones, I think the most likely to happen would be an increase in the game's difficulty and a better balance between gameplay and dialogue scenes. The main reason that I think these are the most likely candidates to actually happen is because they were the things that the Japanese audience took issue with, so it's more likely that Falcom will listen and look to make changes. 
But that's it. If you enjoyed the video, please be sure to leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And if you have any questions about this video, Kuro no Kiseki, or any other game that I cover, feel free to hit me up over on Twitch at twitch.tv slash roslingaming, or on my Discord server, both of which are linked in the video description below. Until next time, take care.